Max Taylor. Thank you, sir. Right with you, sir. Yes. Hello? General Taylor, sir. Max. Mr. President, yes, sir. I got a little labor of love. Uh, I think uh, this fellow McCarthy is uh, uh, intellectual in one of our problems, and he keeps saying that uh, he can see no reason for the bombing and no case for the bombing. Yes. And I would like you to do your homework a little bit and try to. Uh, get such speculations as you need from the CIA and from the defense people and from Westmoreland's people. I'd sure take the letter, a cable I got from Lodge yesterday, the revised one, the first one, he said it'd be over this year, and we told him, get that out, we don't want to be predicting, predicting it, so he revised it. Get Lodge's cable, and then get your best military planner over there. You might want to take him with you. I don't know who you could take. Maybe somebody like Good Pastor's been briefing folks. And go to see McCarthy and make the case for bombing. He says there's no case. Nobody's ever given him any reasons for it. And and he doesn't understand it. And he doesn't know why and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that you can uh, show him that if the boys just hunker up in these enclaves like a jackass in a hailstorm and let them shoot at them, why, they're going to be in a hell of a shape. Yes, and if they don't try some way to make it hard on them and stop them, why, uh, they're going to kill a bunch of American boys that ought to die. Yes, and uh, that the only way you can do that is to try to stop the trucks when they come down the road and uh, try to stop the oil that goes into them and try to keep them busy fixing the bridges and try to hold them up uh, for a few weeks and try to make them pay enough through attrition that they'll finally say, well, uh, we better talk, and then show them that that's what we're trying to do, and uh, point out to him, he's a uh, pretty anti-CIA, but just point out to him that uh, John McCone told us last April we just had to not take 100 sorties or 200 sorties, but we had to take everything we had and unload it right away on all of these areas because the American people wouldn't stand, wouldn't stand still for over six or eight months on bombing. I read his memo yesterday, and it just uh, just proves it's right the way they are raising hell. They're breaking ranks up on the hill because of bombing. But uh, just say now, every time we lose a $3 million plane, we lost three of them yesterday. Uh, we got the pilots back, at least got two out of the three. But every time we lose a $3 million plane, we may have saved ourselves 308 Marines. And we have uh, proceeded on the theory that we use a little steel and a little hydraulics and a little electric system instead of a human. And uh, we think that they've got 100,000 people kept busy because of what we've done. We think they might have twice as many people down there. We don't think we ought to match them man for man. 
And if we're not to match a man for man, we've either got to put some ships or planes, because that's all we've got besides man for man. Yes. And that's what we try to do. And here are the ten reasons why I, as a military man and as a political man, think that it is essential. And just say, now, I went along with the pause, because all these people said from May until uh, December, that if you'd pause long enough to give us a chance, that we can bring them to the peace table. And the Russians said it, Will Fulbright came to me and said it, and Mac Mansfield came to me and said it, and McGovern came to me and said it. Everybody that this Russian ambassador talked to came to me and said it. And after he talked to Mac Bundy, his blood pressure went to 208, and he said he'd got it all worked out. And then Bob McNamara felt the same way, and finally got to Rusk, and Rusk had doubts about it, and we held it up three times, and then Rusk got up and said, well, I think so. And I still thought that we were just being a plain damn fool to pick off our pressure and do this. But uh, everybody else thought otherwise, and finally they told me to talk to Max Taylor, and that he would say that if we're ever going to have a pause, he wasn't urging it or recommending it, but it would do a minimum amount of damage during Christmas when we had bad weather and so forth. And I did, and, and I finally, on my own, without anybody being responsible, concluded that I had listened to this belly aching so long by so many, so frequently. It took so much of my time every day with the Fulbrights and the Mansfields and the Hardkis and the McCarthys and the rest of them coming in that I just say, put up or shut up. So I told him to go tell that Russian ambassador, give him plenty of advance notice, and tell him we not only would have his 12 days, we'd have his 20 days. And uh, uh, now let's see, get busy, and let's see what they do. Well, uh, they couldn't pee a drop. I think Shalep had tried. I just don't think he could deliver. I think they wanted to try to work out something, but I just don't think they could. And, uh, to believe otherwise, or just believe that they they are really determined to eat us up and they can't be trusted at all, and I rather think that's true. I think if anybody treat Kennedy like he did on missiles and lied to him about that, I don't think he can trust him a second, but I won't try to get along in the world. And so anyway, I went ahead on that, and uh, I didn't go for five days. I went for five weeks, and the very damn crowd, this same crowd now that said, if you just give us 12 days, and just give us a chance, and Fulbright and Morris both had been out to dinner. And they ever had been to dinner. They had everybody in this town to dinner. I bet they had you to dinner telling you what to do. And they had Bundy to dinner, and all of them. And by God, we bought it lock, stock, and barrel, and we wound up, as the British said about my clothes, with a big, fat, hunk, chuck, chunk of nothing. That's the way we wound up. But, uh, we oughtn't to be blamed now for being warmongers because we did. Uh, we tried to extend the peace one, and we know that the United Nations are not going to resolve anything, at least we don't think so. But they raise hell about the United Nations, so we're going to do that. Now, their record of prophecy and success is just about as poor as ours. They started out and said, we've got to kill Jim because he's no damn good, and let's, let's knock him off, and we did. That, that's exactly where it started, and I just pled with it at the time, please don't do it, but that's where it started, and they knocked him off. And then, by God, they came along and said, well, you've got to have pacification, you've got no economic program, and so on and so forth, so we did what we could there. Then they said, well, you're not negotiating. I said, well, we'll talk to anybody. Anybody.